Dave, was this a move forced on you just by the need to create a roster spot or something more than that? It was primarily a roster spot. You know, at some point in the near future, we're going to need to to create a roster spot. Um, we have some players with the Marlies that we may want to give a, a look to. We have players that are hopefully coming off of IR, you know, in the near future. That coupled with uh, with Mike's uh, playing time have been in and out of the lineup. Um, you know, Randy used different com combinations. Uh, we felt it was a you know an opportune time to make the move for all those reasons. Did McLaren kind of allow you to move forward without Brown? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, Fraser's play um, uh, made it easier. There's no question about that. He's uh, been able to play in all situations. Randy feels comfortable with him. Not that he didn't feel comfortable with Brownie, but he gave us another option and gave him another option. So it, it was uh, it was definitely a factor. Is this the first of many moves leading up to April 3? Uh, no idea. I mean, like right now, there's not a whole lot on the table f for us. Uh, that can change quickly. This actually happened fairly quickly. So um, I don't know how many moves we'll have between now and the deadline. Dave, do you have a specific philosophy when it comes to the trade deadline, O'Brien? like to say that he feels that teams make mistakes when they get up against that. Do you like to shy away from that, get it done earlier, or will you just play it by ear and see what's there? Play it by ear. If there's a deal there that makes sense for us two weeks from the deadline, we'll do it. If there's one an hour before the deadline, we'll do it. It's, um, you know, I, I think uh, from where we are right now as a team, we're, you know, we're going to try to look long term with anything we do. Wouldn't say we wouldn't make a move to try to help our chances, but primarily our focus is on trying to improve our team for the long term. Can you explain the condition on the draft pick? Uh, the draft pick, we have a hard pick for the player, and that pick can improve based on Edmonton's performance. Do you expect to activate uh, Friday? Uh, that'll be a game time decision. Um, likely uh, may need a little more time, but he's getting close. Is there any update on my commissary status? Or did yeah, that was an interesting day yesterday with uh, a number of messages I got on Mike. First of all, Mike, to, to be very clear, Mike Commissarek has not asked for a trade. Um, I would put Mike down as one of the best teammates that I've ever had in terms of a, of a player that's ever played for me when I've been working for a club. What Mike has said is that if it's in the best in interest of the team, that he wouldn't stand in the way, but his preference is to try to get back in the lineup here in Toronto. That gives us an opportunity, an open door, if there is a you know a move that makes sense for us. Um, but he was very clear with me that he came here, signed here, would love to play here, but understands he's not in the lineup. And if it's not in the best interest of the team, that he would he wouldn't stand in our way. So that to me is a lot different than coming into our office and say I want to be moved. That never happened, um, and uh, I, don't, I don't expect it ever will with Mike. Are there any options for him, such as a conditioning stint? Those are always options, but I, I can tell you, I mean, those, those of you that follow us every day, I don't think there's many guys working harder than Mike um, uh, during practice, and he's put a lot of time in to try to be prepared. You know, that's, that's something we could discuss down the road if it ever came to it, but um, right now we haven't contemplated that. Anything else for you? Coming off his first career, actually, can you just quickly speak on... Um what you can attribute to Nazem Kadri's success this season? First of all, I love the way Naz has played. Everybody does. I love to put the brakes on the, you know, here comes 100 points. Um, Naz has done a very good job. He's, he's, he came into the season, I don't think, as prepared as he would have liked. But to his credit, he put a lot of work in with the Marlies early on, and he got himself ready to play. And his consistency level has been much, much better. Um, his skill is always been there. It's, he didn't get good overnight. He's been good for a long time. But his professionalism and the way he's handled uh, the pro game in the last month and a half has taken a big step forward. And I think he deserves a lot deserves a lot of the credit for that, a great deal of it. And the coaching staff deserves some as well. But there's a lot of work still left to do for Nas for him to be the player that he could be, and he knows that. A lot of the guys in there spoke uh, pretty glowingly about Mike Brown when asked about him. Can you just comment on what type of player Edmonton is getting? You're getting a, a great character guy and a good teammate. And when I spoke to Mike uh, this morning, I, I've had Mike twice. I said, don't rule out a third time. He's that kind of a guy that you'd like to have with you. And then, um, you know, that's the type of player that Edmonton needs right now. Steve Tambellini was very clear about it. 
um, you know, with the youth that they have and the, the teams that they play, they're facing certain players that uh, need some attention. And you know, Mike knows his role, and he's very, very good at it. So um, I think he'll fit in very well in Edmonton. I, I do. I think he, he, the GM knows him. He's had him with me uh, in the past. He's, uh, you know, Mike can play an up-tempo game. He skates very well in Edmonton. And obviously, he's very fleet of foot. And I think he's going to fit in very, very well in Edmonton. They're going to love him. Is uh, Mufo on schedule? Return? Yeah, he's in the. You know, we expect him to be in the in the range. You know. Again, whatever that means from a doctor's standpoint, but yeah, he's he's not he hasn't had any setbacks or anything like that. Um, it's uh, with a broken bone. It's a function first of the bone healing, and then it's regaining strength. And for him, you know, that's that means shooting the puck. So that's going to be the issue for him is when he can actually be a factor with the puck, um, conditioning wise and all the rest of it. That's not going to be an issue at all with Lupo.